This video is sponsored by Scott's Pro Vista Kentucky Bluegrass, now available in limited quantities, and Green County Fertilizers Quality Starter Fertilizers and Biostimulants, always available for direct shipping to your door. They'll make your seed project literally jump out of the ground. Links are in the description below. I think this is where you milk it. Where you milk it? Oh my God, bless his heart. What does bless your heart mean, Chris? Throw it down, boys! Let's hope for the best. Hey, what's up y'all? So let me give you a little bit of context about what this video is. First thing is I'm gonna go ahead and put timestamps in the description below so that way you can go ahead and skip around if you wanna do that, get to the parts that mean the most to you. The other thing I wanted to announce real quick is earlier this week, in case you didn't see it, I actually released a very comprehensive free guide to fall seeding. Aeration, seeding, what seed to buy, why to buy it, how to understand the different cultivars versus monocultures. I even went into the whole process of, do you even really need to seed? Because I know all the cool kids are seeding, but you may not have to. So we'll talk through some of that in the guide as well. All of these different things, defining everything that you need to know about fall seeding as well as actually how to do it, step by step by step. It's well over 30 pages, 100% free. You can click and get that below. You don't have to sign up for any email list or anything like that. It just takes you right to the download link and you can start your education right away. All in all, this is one of the best pieces of content that I've written all year and it's 100% free to you. Just click below and you can download it immediately. Now, one quick thing, since I did release this guide, some folks with warm season turf have been like, hey man, what about us? I'll put in the description below about warm season seeding and that type of stuff so that way everybody else doesn't have to sit through it. But look in the description below, I'll talk to you about warm season seed and why I left that out here in the fall. Now the guide is all about seeding existing lawns like aeration and overseeding, but this video is about how to plant grass seed in a brand new construction lawn, so bare dirt. And I want you to understand something, there isn't gonna be any after here. You're not gonna see any satisfying, beautiful green grass grow after because the title of this video is how to plant grass seed, not how to grow it. So you'll have to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see the after results because we'll show those coming up. But while you're down there, go ahead and hit that like button too. What's up y'all, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. And this week we're gonna be doing some seeding with Zach, the millennial farmer. How come everybody I always collab with is taller than me? <laughs> I think most of the world is taller than me though. Well, it's my high heels. So Zach, tell me about what property we're doing. Whoa, all right, we almost lost it right there. It would have been a lot funnier if you had just it, gone down. Because I would have been on camera. Yeah, exactly. Tell me, uh, where are we at, what are we doing, whose house are we doing, and why, and all of that kind of stuff. We are near Alexandria, Minnesota. This is my parents' home. We bought uh, the farmhouse from them about two years ago. So my parents have been working on this property for well, they were working on it before that, so they've been around here for three, four years, but they got the house done. We got almost everything done here other than the lawn. So that's where I got in touch with you and said, I need, uh, I need somebody who knows what's going on. I got the equipment and we got the property, but I need the smarts, so I brought you in. <laughs> well, I hope I can live up to that. So, hey, yes, hey, I'll walk up high. See, look, now we're the same. Oh, there. Hey, how about that? That works. Look at that. Just stay back there the whole so time. So all day I just got to stand downhill yeah. from you? Yeah, and that works out. Okay, all right. What I did was I thought, man, this would be a great opportunity for us to get a hold of Scott, the Scott's company, because they have their glyphosate tolerant Kentucky bluegrass seed. And one of the biggest questions you guys always ask is, how do I grow grass from seed? So here we are. We have a perfect seed bed here, and it's also a large property. See, one of the things that I always do, because most of the people we work with are residential, it's small lawns, 8,000, 10,000 square feet. Yep. This is big acreage. This is big, at, what is it, 60? 60,000, 60, 70,000 yeah. Couple acres, feet. almost yeah. a couple acres. So yep. this will be great. We got big equipment. Uh, we got some big expertise on board, and we're gonna have a lot of fun working and showing you guys how to seed a big lawn. We're also gonna do some small areas just to show you how you would see the small area as well. Just wrap the extra cords around your ankles. I'm here to help. I appreciate that. So clearly, I don't know anything about the big equipment. That's why I have Chris here and two farmers. So they're gonna run all the big stuff. We're gonna do a little hand raking behind because this first job here with the Harley rake is just to go ahead and get things kind of smoothed out, get any big bumps pushed out of it, and then we're gonna hand finish it right behind them, so.
right, y'all, so first let's talk about how we prepared the seed bed. Now, there are multiple different ways that you could do this. This is the way we chose to do it, and I think we maybe even did a little bit of overkill, but we weren't sure what we were really walking into, so we made sure we had provision for all the right tools that we would need. Now the first thing is the property had what's called a final grade done and it was actually done very well, but a final grade is not ready for seed. A final grade is really more about drainage and water flow and making sure that there are no you know, major hills or chasms in the lawn area. So let me just give you the quick summary of how we did this. The first thing we did is we ran through with a Harley rock rake and you'll see that a Harley rock rake has this spinning cylinder with the spikes on it. And the main thing that it does is it pulls rocks up out of the soil so that you can get rid of them. In fact, when you run it on a little bit of an angle, it actually wind rows them, which is a term I learned. I didn't know that term, I'm not a farmer, but it actually pushes the rocks to the side so that way it's easy for you to just kind of go down and get rid of them. And we got rid of obviously the big rocks, but anything bigger than about two or three inches and larger than that, we definitely wanted to pull out. The other thing the Harley Rock Rake will do is if you do have any undulations in your grade, it'll go ahead and knock those down as well. Then the second thing we did is we had an aerovator. Now an aerovator is meant to do a couple different things. The first thing is you can see it has these balls with tines on them that kind of vibrate. That's to break up any crust that's there on the soil surface. And then the other thing it does is you can fill it with seed and it'll drop seed down. And then it has this nice roller behind that that creates a nice finished grade. Okay, so essentially what's happening right now is I'm trying not to do a lot of work, but the Harley rake is kind of just going through and really exposing the rocks is essentially what it's doing. And then we're picking up, well, they're, they're picking up the rocks behind. And then after that, he runs the aerovator through and you can see it makes a nice, clean, flat bed to seed on. Now you can use the aerovator to seed also, but Chris said he prefers to use a spreader and broadcast the seed across and then go back over it to push the seed in because it makes sense, you know, when you're in tight quarters and things like this, you could actually miss a spot, you know, you could if your rows are not completely tight or whatever. So that's kind of the idea there. So we didn't use the aerovator for its ability to seed. We really just used it for that roller that's on the back. So we went through with the Harley rock rake. We used the aerovator to flatten everything out. We hand raked all the edges and corners and any areas where we couldn't get through with the big equipment. And then it was on the next day to seed, starter fur, and pre-emergent using Mesotride. All right, well, I hope this wind isn't gonna be too bad. We are coming to the end of day one now and all of the grading is complete. Harley rake through, hand picked all the rocks out. And then Chris ran the aerovator over. So tomorrow is going to be seed and starter fertilizer day. Stay tuned. Okay, here we are at day two. We've actually been here for a couple hours. We're just doing some final cleanup around the edges to make sure the grade's right. Pulling out the last few rocks. This is one of those things you could actually be pulling out rocks for months. <laughs> so there's some point where you got to cut it off, but we are still trying to get some of the larger ones out and then we're going to do some seeding. But before we do that, I wanted to talk with Zach a little bit because I think you guys are really gonna find it interesting just how many similarities there are to farming as there are to what we do, because we're just suburban farmers, just a different crop. And actually, I think it surprised Zach a little bit too. Let's go talk to him now. So I wanted to stop here real quick. So one of the things that was interesting to me as we were talking yesterday, we were talking chemicals, kind of geeking out on that. And you said you were kind of surprised that we use a lot of the same stuff you do. Very, yeah, you guys started talking uh, chemistry, NPK, and you started talking my language. Yeah. I was, I was interested in that right away, because it's like, these guys know exactly what's going on with that. Yeah, so like we have these different chemicals, like we're gonna put down a try on today. Now we're gonna yeah. use that for its pre-emergent properties, but you use it for post-emergence, right? We do, yeah. Yeah, and we can use it as a pre, but we do use it as a, as a post-emergent herbicide. Yeah. yeah. So we're familiar with that, and uh, you were talking azoxystrobin, were you? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a fungicide we use on the soybeans every year. We use azoxystrobin, and I, I wish I could remember the other active ingredient in there. Is that it? Yep. Okay, that's what it is, two modes of action. Um, you were talking about modes of action this morning, so it's all the same language. Yeah, and what's cool, that was in your video yesterday when I was watching it, I was like, hey, they're using the two modes of action too because it helps to cut down on resistance and that type of thing. Yep. And so we call that the bulletproof strategy. My folks will know that. So it's pretty cool. I tell you guys, you guys are literally your suburban farmers and your crop is turf grass. 
but a lot of the strategy and a lot of the way that we approach it, there's overlap, but there's one big difference. You know what that big difference is? Besides the you're fact that we're, the, besides the fact that we're 8,000 square feet and you're however many hundreds of acres. Well, you're not harvesting a commodity. Exactly right. Other than pride. See, he, he's a lawn care nut. That's right. And that's exactly right. So our crop is perennial. So it's the same one year after year. So we do have to approach it a little differently. We're not putting all of our fertilizer inputs in in one, you know, big dose in the spring. More than likely, we're doing ours ongoing. But other than that, we literally treat the crops the same way. Yeah, awesome. Pretty cool stuff. So I just want to let you guys know, you are cool just like the millennial <laughs> farmer, whether you know it or not. Cummins engine is the exact same as what's in the big ears. Yeah. But they're just so we've had a little bit of a challenge here, and that is that the tractor that's been running the aerovator has a hydraulic issue. You can watch Zach's channel to find out exactly what all these mean. I think it just needs a new flux capacitor, but who am I to, you know, tell them how to fix a tractor? So the good news is the entire property has been gone over with the aerovator, so it's done its job in that it's created a nice, you know, finished grade and uh, broken up any compaction or anything like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the starter fertilizer and the seeding, and then they've got just a plastic roller, drum roller that you fill with water. We're just gonna pull that behind the uh, four-wheeler and that'll just be the final set to push the seed down into the soil. And then from there, we're gonna roll out our erosion mats and hopefully we'll be done here before the end of the day because I got a plane flight tomorrow. Zach, what kind of what kind of starter fertilizer is that? That is uh, that is a high tran uh, case high tran starter fertilizer. Man, I very think, low viscosity. I think you're gonna have the best growth in the lawn right there. I, I think we're we're gonna have to kind of rake that under and yeah. And blend, or sh you want to call the EPA or should I? Now you're gonna see us using a permagreen right on spreader here to get all this done. That's because this is a large property. If you had a smaller property, you could just spread the seed with your normal spreader. You could spray out the starter fertilizer with a hand can or backpack sprayer. And then of course you could also apply your tenacity that way. We did use the Scott's Pro Vista Kentucky Bluegrass, which is available now in limited quantities. I'll link you below to their website. They have like a contact form. If you're somebody that's interested in getting it, I think they mostly have it through the Midwest and maybe out towards the East, they will let you know. But it is glyphosate tolerant, which means going forward, the only weed control that you would really need for it is the glyphosate because that is a non-selective herbicide. It basically kills everything. But this Kentucky Bluegrass, very much like my Pro Vista St. Augustine grass, it's been bred to be tolerant of glyphosate. Additionally, they've bred it to be deeper, darker blue-green color, and it also has that low mowing function, meaning instead of mowing your Kentucky bluegrass every week like you probably have to do in the growing season, you may only have to mow it every two weeks or even every 16 or 17 days. For our starter fertilizer, we're using the 16212 Green Pop from Green County Fertilizer. And I wanted to point something out, being that it is 21% phosphorus, which is what you want in a starter fertilizer, is that high phos, because it's really gonna push a lot of roots really quick but it's also got liquid aeration included. That's the potassium hydroxide. So we have a product that's liquid aerate that we sell separately, but in this product, it's blended in. So not only are you getting the macros and some micros, you're getting the liquid aerate, as well as it's got humic acid, just like everything that John Perry blends, and a little bit of sea kelp. We also did go ahead and juice that in with a little bit of extra RGS, just for a little bit of more of those hormones to create roots and shoots. And then finally, we did put mesotrione in the mix because that is going to act as a pre-emergent to keep out some of the weed pressure that could be coming in here. Our application rate is three pounds per thousand. And then we have the green pop going down, that's 15 ounces per thousand. And then we have the RGS on top of that, and uh, that's three ounces per thousand. Okay, this is plan B since uh, we have inherited the, uh, the luck of Zach and that everything breaks at some point. So since tractor is down, we are going to use this roller on a bank at a Polaris overbiter. And uh, this is gonna be used to seat the seed down into the ground and just help push down any uh, high spots that there are. There you can go, you can see what the finished product looks like when it's rolled, nice and flat. So you can see, I don't know if you can tell, that's a nice flat surface. I feel really good about this grade. Everything looks good. Now we just have to pick. We have uh, enough mats to go across about 40,000 square feet, almost 50,000 square feet. And we have 60,000 here total. So enough to get a good majority of it. And we're definitely gonna get all the hills like up there where it slopes. 
and then down through there, and then in the back where the lake is. So they're, how long are they? They're 100 eight, feet long? Eight foot by 100 feet. So eight. we only need one in the ditch. Which way are we going to run them then? Well, in the ditch we'll run them horizontal. Is that is that the right word? Horizontal? Perpendicular? South. Vertical? But definitely we're going to run one up here on this slope here. It is the straw mat installation time. All right, well, we are still making progress. You can see we're getting uh, all the hills done over here. A little bit to go over there. Almost looks like we know what we're doing. This is uh, only half the yard. We still have another half over there, but that's mostly downhill, so we think that's gonna go faster. Okay, so now we have a section here that we're gonna have to do by hand. We can't get you really any of the big equipment in, or, or, in there or anything. So we'll show you how to do a small section if you're somebody that has to just do a smaller lawn. So the first thing you wanna do is prepare your seed bed, get it nice and flat, get the rocks out. We're gonna do that first. Then the second thing you're gonna do is apply your starter fertilizer in your seed. And then you're gonna go back out over it with a light rake just to get everything pushed in. And then we're gonna use peat moss as a covering just to help it stick down, help a little bit more, you know, moisture retention, that kind of thing. And then that'll also hopefully help it to keep from washing away. All right, so yesterday we did what you might call like a rough grade in this area. And you can see we've run over with the tractor, things like that. So it needs to be fixed up a little more. And so I'll do some raking, but one thing you might want to get is one of these. They call it a garden cultivator, but the original name of this was the garden weasel. And this is actually a seeding secret. You can seed into an existing lawn with one of these or use it to break up chunks in the lawn. We're actually using an aerovator to do, you know, a machine to do the main parts of the lawn. But this will do the same thing that an aerovator does and is great for small sections like this. Especially in an area like this, see where the tractor's gone over, this is compacted now. This will help to break up that compaction. Then of course, just your good old landscape rake will help you as well. Get everything smoothed out. Wasn't a great idea to run tractors over this, but it is what it is. Another thing, people are always, people are concerned about rocks. There's no way to get 100% of the rocks out of everything. So you just wanna do the best that you can. But little rocks like this in there, there's no way you're gonna get them all out. So the grass will grow around them and uh, everything will be just fine. Whew. Getting a workout already, huh? <laughs> Jumped on it too fast. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> Man, I'm just worn out from yesterday. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> okay. All right, now we got everything prepared here fairly well. Got the top couple inches of the soil broke up. Now we're gonna put our seed down now. Our seed rate here is three pounds per thousand because this is a brand new seeding. I usually would use a spreader for this, but we don't have one, so I'm just gonna put it down by hand. I'm gonna throw her down and hope for the best. By the way, you know that you're getting the uh, brand new, not really yet released version when they use a Sharpie to label it. Now the other thing you'll notice is Kentucky bluegrass seed is very tiny as compared to like turf type tall fescue is like three or four times this size. But Kentucky bluegrass, very tiny little seeds. We're gonna use that Kentucky windage to make sure we get this down. Now some people will ask, you know, should you put the seed down first or the starter fertilizer first? It doesn't really matter. I mean, you just don't want to make a mess, right? So if you put the starter fertilizer down first and things are wet, then you're walking on that. So that's something to think about if you're using a liquid starter fertilizer, but really it doesn't matter. They both just go down together at about the same time. Okay, next thing is, we got the area, we got it seeded, we got it raked in, and now we're gonna put down some starter for it. Now you would use a hand can for this, but Chris is gonna go ahead and use the full pump here. Okay, so now the final step is we wanna cover the seed area with something that's gonna, number one, help prevent erosion, Number two, gonna keep the birds from eating the seed. Number three, help hold in moisture. And so you can see we're using erosion mats over there, and that would be your first best choice. But if you're doing a super small area, you can use peat moss, this giant brick here. This would easily cover, you know, almost a thousand square feet. This is like $10. So this is your most economical way of using a covering. And this is also clean. This won't have any weeds in it or anything like that. This also is by far the dirtiest way to do it. So you literally just take the peat out and you just put it along. Now, the other thing here is you don't have to worry about getting this too thick. Because it's such a thin, airy, light material, it won't, it won't uh, bury the seed, it won't choke the seed out. So feel free to go pretty thick on it. Whereas if you use topsoil, which I don't recommend, but if you did, you could get that too deep and choke your seed out. You're doing great, Alan. Thank you. You're doing just fantastic. <laughs> We're here supervising. We're here you. Yeah, if you got any questions, let me know. Pete Moss is Randy's brother. Yeah, yeah. One must win business together. <laughs> So I need you to teach me how does this work right here. So do you just kind of go, hey, are you are you okay? Are yep. you okay? Is that how you do it? That's exactly how you do it. Yeah. yeah. But what happens? Do you what happens? Do you, is that all you do? Mm -hmm. That's uh -huh. it. You did it. You tried. I mean, you you put in the effort. The compassion was there. There's nothing you can do anymore at, at this point. It's fertilizer now. All right, Zach, so there it is, all finished, lots of work. Thank you very much for, I mean, you worked harder, harder than we did, and thank you guys. It was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see the results here. I think your dad's gonna love it. He's gonna have a dominant lawn. 
you know? And that's what it's all about. It is, and I can't wait to see him put some stripes in over here. Yeah. Yeah, but. Come down this hill. For most of all, for me and, and for you guys to know, it was just, first of all, it's really cool to meet a YouTuber that I idolize and watch and I'm like a fanboy of. And we, we, I know it's, you don't like hearing that, but it's fun to say, like, when you meet them, like, you're as cool or cooler than we always thought you were. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fun. And so it's been a lot of fun, and I'm so glad we did this. And I want to thank Scott's Green County Fertilizer also for, for sponsoring this and coming through for us. And uh, Dad's going to water real good. Yep. And uh, we'll show you guys some results in a few weeks, and then next spring is when you're really going to see the big growing. Yep, it's going to look awesome. All right, let's thank, give them... Thank you guys to everybody involved here. It's been fun. You're welcome. It's Tons been awesome. Fun. Let's give them a throw her down. On the count of three, throw her down, boys, and hope for the best. Ready? All right. One, two, three. Throw, throw her down, down boys. boys! Let's hope for the best.